Hey, everybody. Welcome to another Zoom episode of Between the Sheets podcast. I'm Gayam Bruno, your host. Um, thank you for joining us. It is 7.06. We're on time in some place. I don't know. <laughs> um, it's hard to get a whole bunch of women together on a Zoom call. That's why I like to bring them into the studio. We're here on the first and third Friday of every month. Today, Today is our one year anniversary. Can you believe that? It's um, crazy, 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 crazy. Um, but uh, we've got a lot of people here in the house. Actually, I've cut it down. So we'll start with, we have Mara Shane. Hi. We have Cara Noble. Hello, going yellow. <laughs> we have Jenny McNulty. She should get the applause. Um, Cheryl Murphy's in the house. Great to be here again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we have two amazing guests because we just can't have one. I've got to have two. And the topic, well, the topic is yet another heavy one. But um, but I think we'll, trust me, we have some uh, tricks up our sleeve. Um, we have, it's going to be human trafficking. Yay! Um, uh, <laughs> Woo! Uh, COVID and human trafficking. So all the way from San Francisco, um, I've met her through her events. Uh, she has a pseudonym, Max Mecca. She does the Mecca events up in San Francisco, as well as down here in LA. Her real name is Kelly Gilliam. She is actually, believe it or not, the expert or at least the point of reference here to discuss human trafficking, because she works or volunteers, or Kelly, I'll let you talk later, at the Knowles Foundation. Um, and that is the human trafficking edge here. Mm -hmm. And then, all I met this other lady, Patty Doherty, in Ojai, through a mutual friend of ours, and um, she's just an amazing, energetically beautiful, balanced spirit. Um, but I didn't know what the hell she did. Um, but she was so cool that I said, you have to be on the show. Um, she is a life coach, a connector, a podcaster, a Reiki. Reiki, right? How do you say that stupid word? Reiki, 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 Reiki. A Reiki, Reiki. Um, and um, she's going to, she's a spiritual headhunter. And we can get more into what she does. She has a company called... Um, Doherty Solutions. So none of this, all this is other crap. So uh, ladies, okay. How have you been doing? Let's start with Mara. Let's do a quick round table. Mara, what have you been up to quickly? Yeah, that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much just the same old, same old since the whole uh, virus thing. I'd love to say that I was out taking vacations and partying it up at a lesbian bar, but no. There aren't any. <laughs> no, there aren't any. And Cara, what lesbians bars have you hit recently? None. <laughs> <laughs> I have been doing my, I'm working on my Taj Mahal mosaic, which is four by four feet by six feet. You, some of you have seen it. Um, and I'm now working on the daytime sky. So I have did a lot of that this week. I also wrote a song with my brother-in-law my ex-brother-in-law yeah. <laughs> just very really nice lovely it's been a fabulous experience to do that so because um, yeah. elliot because it's elliot and elliot hey, doesn't live it. down here little elliot lives up north doesn't he or central somewhere yeah yeah he's in eugene uh no he's not in eugene oregon at all <laughs> he's in auburn california which is oh this my side god of eugene oregon eugene oregon <laughs> i know I can't, I can't believe you, know, you brought up Eugene. That, oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. You know, a year ago when I joined this show, I was doing rehearsing for his musical, which we performed in Auburn twice, mm -hmm. just around last June, whenever it was. Um, I can't believe you're saying it's a year. I can't believe it, and it's incredible. I know. We were supposed to have a party. I was getting ready to plan mm -hmm. the one-year anniversary party, but it'll be in um, September of 2021. Um, okay. <laughs> Um, so now I wish Jenny McNulty. Um, I had the honor of being 
on Jenny's show yesterday. Oh. When, when the hell did we do it, Jenny? Yesterday, two days ago? I think it was yesterday, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yesterday. Um, I had, and um, that was so much fun where the table was turned and it was great. And I, I just appreciate that. So besides, what are you doing? Besides That's the one o'clock? Pretty much it. Well, I'm doing that uh, five days a week. So it's been really a lot to do with super. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. And we're doing Pandemic Password on Mondays, which is like the game show myself and Lisa Coach. She does a game called Sister Mary Agnes Lavia. Uh, and it, it, we do, it's just simply kind of stupid fun. It's the old password game. It's a, it's like the $10,000 pyramid. Remember the style of that game? That That's one of them. There's, she's she's a great singer, songwriter. So she like will just start playing a song and then stop. And they've got to make up lyrics. It's really, it's silly and it's fun. It's four o'clock every Monday, Pandemic Password. And like I said, my daily talk show, having a blast. Thank you so much for doing it. It was really cool that I got to ask her and I forgot one. I forgot. Yeah. You can ask me tonight if you want, if it's okay, well, a burning thing that you need to ask me. <laughs> <laughs> and Cheryl Murphy, what have you been doing in the world of the uh, spiritual? The world of the spiritual. Well, guys, tomorrow I'm actually part of an online mystic fair. So how nice. about that? So it's about 12 mediums and psychics. We're doing over a hundred readings for people. So it's kind of like a speed readings, but they're actually uh, all scheduled and blocked out, but it's uh, it's a first time for us tomorrow to do this event online. So it's pretty spectacular. We're pretty much sold out a couple of slots left, but I'm really looking forward to it. So that's what I've been working on. Sounds so, fun. Yeah. yeah something Everybody, interesting. If you're fun. listening to Between the Sheets, the first and third Friday of every month, we've got Kelly Gilliam and Patty Doherty. If you want to call in, 323-524-2599, 323-524-2599. So Kelly, 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 Kelly. Yes. What have you been doing up in SF? <laughs> what have I been doing? Well, not, nothing but good things, really. Um, but anyways, well, for me, we still have our lesbian bar that's still open because uh, Jolene's in San it? Francisco. Yeah, Jolene's in San Francisco. She uh, has food. So it's actually open for takeout. Good. Oh, yeah. well, well, yes. I've, I've been told by the lesbians there are no more lesbian bars. <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> in the well, we do. Well, in fact, high, uh, high Tops in uh, L.A. and West Hollywood is owned by a lesbian. Okay. All right. I'm, you, you're telling the lesbian. So <laughs> tell me. <laughs> I like how that's what really upsets you, Kara. We can, for the longest time, we couldn't get married. We have no rights. None of these things. No. We have no bars. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. The last hurdle. Gone. And Patty, Cheers to that. Cheers to that. That's right. <laughs> Um, Patty, where are you right now? Uh, I'm in the state of Washington where we're on lockdown for another month. No. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Just came, so just came out like 20 minutes ago, May 31st. Wow. But what they're going to offer now is drive-in spiritual services. I'm hey. kind of curious. Oh, hey. <laughs> like, like, spirit what is that right? exactly? I yeah. know. <laughs> What is that exactly? That's what I want to know. But you know what? Since I'm a spiritual headhunter, I want to be in the know. Yes, you do. <laughs> I'm going to find that. <laughs> so, so, Kelly, let's get on our topic. A fun, fun, light topic of human trafficking. Kelly, how did you get into this? What do you do? Um, and what is the Nalls Foundation? And then when you want to, let us know. And then we'll have Kurt run that clip from ABC News. Oh, great. Okay, perfect. Yeah, thank you. So basically what it is, is uh, I started up Knowles Foundation. It's a nonprofit with a co-founder, actually with my girlfriend at the time, still my business partner uh, of uh, nine years. And her and I, it was actually her idea. I'm kind of like this silent partner. Um, but anyways, but what it is, is that about nine years ago, we started it up and it was for uh, kids, a lot of children in the foster care system, right? They were, turns out they were getting involved in human trafficking. We have houses for girls and we have houses for, now we have houses for boys as well, but it's ages 14 to 19. And in yes. these homes, we were finding out from kids. And then we started hearing, we were getting more and more phone calls from all over the United States asking if we had openings for kids who had been involved in human trafficking. And we're like, what, you know, and we didn't realize that there was such a high piece of it. So sure enough, we decided that we were going to gear part of our housing, you know, a lot of these homes, 
have children that are uh, LGBT youth. Some of them are involved in human trafficking, some are not. But there's over 4 million kids that are involved in human trafficking in the United States. Wow. wow. Yeah. Talk about a silent thing, right? People, How many again, please? How many? Four, four million. Wow. Four million. Unbelievable. Four oh million. God, in fact, uh, and then the actual amount, it's, uh, I'll get to that to you later, but it's, it's billion <laughs> dollars. Mm-hmm. Number one industry in the world, right? Oh wow. Uh, yeah. And it's amazing. So we actually have kids that are been in the house, and you'll see this clip, and it actually might not be about you to show in a few seconds because it kind of brings people in, but they had for, and then we also have trans youth, right? So they were biological boys that became girls, that they were also involved in it. So you have two different spectrums of kids that are being involved in human trafficking. People think, oh, is the pimp driving around, you know, in this limousine, whatever, in a pimp mobile, like they show in the movies. These pimps can be their boyfriends. They're starting out, these kids are as young as 12 years old that are involved in human trafficking. Man. Years wow. old that are involved in it. Their boyfriends are uh, pimping them out at schools, all that sort of thing. And targeting, they like to target uh, girls that are uh, involved in uh, special ed. So that's why God. kids are targets. Wow. So anyway, so we developed our program to make sure that our program, when they come in, right, we're going to basically, it's like kind of like a blanket, right? We're going to wrap them up because these kids are going to be coming and going. And you can't change just like cigarettes, right? Somebody can't quit cigarettes like that. So when you get a, anybody who's involved in human trafficking, it's like six times before they'll finally come to you and feel safe at your home or wherever you might be to entrust in you. And uh, so we uh, decided to make this sure that this program was set up where, I mean, I've been doing this for over 10 years, right? We got not the California nonprofit of the year award still doesn't matter. I do not find myself to be an expert in this field, except for how to house the youth and work with our community partners. And that's what we do is so when the youth comes into the house, we make sure that we hook up with all of our community partners Mm -hmm. that specialize in working with youth that have been Mm -hmm. in human trafficking, but they make now the trans youth. Now they make a lot of money. So it's different. So the trans youth are making a lot of money. They would come into the house with like $1,500, right? But yet the girls, it's a different spectrum because the girls are kind of, they're getting involved in it because they want to be loved, right? And so mm-hmm. it's, you can see how it works, but they want to be loved. They want somebody to nurture them. And, you know, and this is definitely like a topic to have for another day to get more into detail about it. However, they're being like lured in. You know, it's just like overnight, hey, oh, my God, their boyfriend's like, hey, you want to, you know, sleep with somebody else. So these kids, a lot of them have been kind of wheeled in by the, mm. by the John. And what is this transient, trans youth? Is that transient youth or uh, is trans- transitioning out of the state youth? Uh, no, so trans youth, so basically transgender youth. So they were by oh, okay. yeah. girls. Um, girls. And so... Um, and so we have a lot of that, but it's interesting because, you know, they're biological boys. So that's, why they do not get, or most of them, they do not get beat up by the pimp or the john, right? Because they are physically tough. The girls, it's a different story, but it is, it's interesting because the houses, you know, we have houses right in San Francisco and also down in LA, but the houses, we always have to make sure that our staff and all of us were well-trained but we're always watching our P's and Q's about these youth because sometimes you'll get a girl who comes in and she's known as the bitch. And that bitch's job is to work for that pimp and to go into homes and recruit other girls. Oh, right. Two oh. phones, you know, two phones, three phones. But yeah. you know, before I forget, the key thing to always remember, and this goes into with, right, with that people involved in abuse and domestic violence and stuff, is that any time these youth come to us, Number one, we're believing them. And I'm letting them know now, number one, and I have no script. I read no script with these kids, right? You have to fill it in the heart. But number one, we got to tell them we believe them. We got to believe it. And you got to believe it in your heart and your soul. But they're telling you the truth. Your friend comes to you about being abused or something. Tell them, I believe you. Because nobody believes them. People, that's why they're always full of shame. And that no one will be on their side. So that's what we make sure we do with these youth at the very beginning. It's like, all right. Man, you know, I told, I believe what you're telling me is happening, but it, it's really interesting. But did you want to show that, um, show that clip, uh, Gan? It's actually from ABC 7 News. I think it's like three minutes and it kind of gives you an overview 
But we work with the UN and we work with, uh, I'm on the mayor's task force, anti-human trafficking, but I'm not a me too. I'm not a survivor of human trafficking. So for me, it's not a trigger. So for me to work with these youth, it's more like they're like, God, Kelly, you like the bulldozer, right? I bulldoze for these kids to make sure that they feel self in the, safe in the house, but then it's up to them. And then they're able to tell their, tell their story. So whenever I'm called up to be an interview like UN or whether it be, you know, on a panel, I always actually make sure that that youth is actually the one, the survivor is the one who's able to tell their story because it's them who's the experts. Hmm. Kurt, ready, yeah. ready to roll? I'm yeah, ready to so, roll. Okay, sorry, really quick. Uh, so this video, so we were uh, approached by ABC7 News. This was a few years ago because of the Super Bowl, because that's when uh, human trafficking, sex, sexual exploitation shoots up. So uh, ABC7 News came to us and they came out to the house for about three hours because we keep in touch with all the youth, even after they leave and they become adults, right? Because if nobody else is going to do it, we make sure we're keeping on those kids. Hey, you're going to school, whatever you're doing, make sure that even though they've emancipated out of the system. Anyhow, so the youth came to speak, the young adults, but they used to live in our house. But they heard this all over the country and then they uh, air it always during the uh right before the Super Bowl as well. Uh -huh. Okay. All right, Ready? it's gonna play right now. Thank you. Well, the hype and the glamour and excitement surrounding the upcoming Super Bowl also unfortunately is the type of big scale event that brings an increase in human trafficking. ABC 7's Cheryl Jennings talked with a young women who escaped from a life of prostitution yeah. thanks to community resources that are actually helping them, not putting them in jail, Cheryl. That's the good side of this. Now, these young women and men, they could be your sons and daughters, and sadly, they get trapped in a vicious cycle, poor, uneducated, and very afraid. I met with some young people who escaped from a life of what some call human slavery. They were so vulnerable, and all had run away from foster homes or group homes. Um, did you have a pimp? Yes, I did. I couldn't eat, so he said eat. Like, if I didn't make any money that day, like, I couldn't eat. Um, I'll be up, like, all hours of the day, like, trying to make money. Mari was just 14 when she found herself in a life of prostitution. She'd been in foster care since she was eight years old. She didn't have much, just a few pictures, and a nightmare of a life. Just the thought of, like, someone like owning you as like property or telling you like oh like if you leave i'll kill you like just that thought is like really really scary i met mari at the Knolls group home in san francisco where she stayed after she escaped from the abuse i ended up running away like when he was asleep i ended up you know leaving and i was just even though i didn't know anybody it was raining i just ran so i couldn't run no more Mari is now 23 and a mother of a toddler, and she thanks the Knolls group home every day for her new life. And that feeling is shared by 20-year-old Stacy, who asked us to disguise her face and voice. I just felt everything I hadn't felt so long since I've been with my family, and it just, I loved it. She was just 14, a foster child, when the first of many Johns preyed on that young teen. I had eaten, I just ran from my group home, I needed clothes, I, I didn't know what to do, so I just went with them and went to his car and we drove around, we parked in the parking lot and I had sex with him and I, I was with him for about an hour and uh, he gave me $150 and I left. Stacy came to the Knolls group home as a transgender teen. Now she has a new life and a new job. Sometimes as us being children, especially in us being minors, we're young minded and we're brought into something not knowing what how serious it can be and how serious the consequence can be. 20 year old Mariah is also transgender, a former foster child and lived a hard life on the streets starting at 14. She stayed at the Nalls group home for five years. A lot of the times they don't have any clothes, so we make sure they get all their clothes, all their toiletries. And then I get them enrolled in school right away. Kelly Gilliam works at the Knolls Group Home with the founder, Tina Dollison. We have um, six girls who live here. Tina's team of counselors treats the girls like family. I look around and know that these girls had such a hard life, and yet I see big stuffed toys because inside they're just kids. Yes, just kids just want to be loved, want to be heard. We could do whatever we can for these survivors, but as long as you have Johns out there, it's not going to stop. There are a lot of resources and hotlines available for you to report suspicious activity and help save these young people. For more information, you can log on to our website, abc7news.com. Wow. Wow. 
That's amazing. So how long have you guys had this? How many years again? It's uh, well, actually, so we just celebrated our uh, 10 year anniversary. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It's great because, you know, we, we do it because we like you know, we like children, right? We like to ha- make sure that these kids have a fun childhood. It's like, you see the, what they've experienced. They're dealing with trauma, but at the same time, they're kids. They want to have fun. So we make sure that, yeah, you know, the trauma part is being, you know, recognized the mental health issue. Right. And, but at the same time, they're able to go to school, you know, do whatever hobbies they like to do. So it's just, it's, and it's a fun atmosphere. They're only supposed to stay in those homes usually from three to six months, but you heard, mm. you know, right. had lived there for like four or five years because, you know, at that house, we work with the attorneys and the social workers and the schools. So we all work side by side to make sure, Hey, if that youth wants to stay at that house, and they're fine and they're safe. That's all we care about is them being safe and that they feel like they're being loved at a home. Right. And then from there, you know, but it is, it's a lot of structure, but it is at the same time, it's like a sense of uh, support from that, from us, from all of the counselors. Now, Patty, so important. Now, Patty, I mean, you have a whole other, obviously you don't do human trafficking, but I'm sure in your practice and stuff as a life coach and stuff, you've come across situations where people may have had a similar situation or something. And how, I mean, how does that get from like human, like where, what Kelly's doing to when they grow up and become adults, how does it impact? What has been your experience in, in your, in your travels? And, and, and here it is, those wounds are deep. Mm-hmm. And, and with that, you have to transform it, mm-hmm. right? You need to get to a place, you know, it's, it just makes that inside job that much more detailed right? Because it's so important to feel safe. And so many of us don't feel safe. Mm -hmm. And, and going into a more uncertain situation of exploring yourself and those wounds that you have, right? I mean, those, my heart is going out to those kids right now. I mean, dear God, like I was raised in New Jersey and Lord knows, you know, you're, you're from the East coast. I mean, we know what it's like back there. You have, you have tough love and tough skin, and, you know, I think having that ability to have tough love and, and call people out, but yet, you know, having them be safe and be vulnerable, so important, so important for them to have a support system like that. Like the work that you're doing, seriously, I'm, I'm just so, I'm, I'm proud to be here. I mean, what an honor. You know, those yeah. kids, they're so brave. You know, yeah. when I was listening to Mari, in that uh, clip you just showed, I mean, what courage, you know, yeah. that's just all I saw was that strength, no matter what, you know, they were going to get through it no matter what. Yeah, right. Right. You know, that's sorry to interrupt. You know, that's one of the things we mentioned to a lot of these youth is that when they are in the house, I mean, number one, it's like how they survive this and how they're still yeah. alive. Even and I had mentioned to gay on the other day, some of the youth are coming over from like Nicaragua coming across the border and they're teenage girls. And I read the report before I go, you know, pick them up at shelter. And I'm telling you, you're like, oh my God, this kid, what happened for one month it took her to get to the border. And I, you know, I don't ever approach these kids and say, hey, I want to hear about it. Tell me, please, you know, make sure, hey, when you feel comfortable, you there's somebody here you want to talk with, great. Tell any, you know, tell us what you want to share with us. But you think how the hell can they survive from going a month to get across that border? It's amazing how many of these kids can survive. And so the first thing we always let them know, it's like, you know, we always tell them, look, it, you could stay in this house till you turn 19, till you age out, no matter what. You make mistakes, it's okay. Excuse my language, but this is how I talk to the kids. I'm like, it's okay, because we all fuck up. We all fuck up in life. Right. I'll make mistakes. It's okay that you do that. But at the same time, it's like, but to make sure that when they, you know, and I tell them, I'm like, when you guys, when you become 18 or 19 and you want a job, we'll make sure that you guys can come work for us and be an intern or whatever. Because I figure those are the best kind of kids to have people to have working for you because they're mentally tough. Yeah. Right. So, so important for them to know that they're not broken. Yeah. Yep. Right. Exactly. So important for them to know that they're perfect just the way that they are and they're, and they're mm-hmm. living the human experience. Some of us have an easier ride than others, right? Yep, it's true. So, I mean, like, do they, like, like Kelly, with your, with what your organization does, do you, how do you get the kids? Like, do they come to you sometimes? Do you go out and, because I know people have done other things where they've seen it and they've sort of kidnapped the kids, but for safety. I mean, it's like sort of kidnapping them from the, 
the the situation. So how do you right. normally how do these kids find you? So when it happens is the most of the kids will come from each county. So all counties, including like Riverside, a county will pick up a youth and they'll get arrested or whatnot. So they'll be picked up and then uh, they they will get us a call. So all of our houses are full all the time. And it's really a shame. They always ask us to open up more homes. I'm like, well, it's not that easy. But yeah. you talk about we get calls from counties. We get calls from like the Mexican consulate. I get a lot of uh, phone calls from the California Highway Patrol because these youth who have been in our homes, now they'll tell us things and I'm like, holy shit. But they'll tell me exactly where, where they're hanging out. So I will go down there and I'll let the California Highway Patrol because California Highway Patrol, they can work in all different counties. So they're just not, you know, in one county. But those women that we work with, California Highway Patrol, they'll call me up and because they'll find out, okay, this kid, we picked up this kid. And if I cannot house them, then we'll refer them to another house that we know will be very safe for them. But right, but mostly it's from uh, counties. Oh, and then it's also word of mouth. So these kids will talk and then they'll tell their social worker, hey, I heard about Nall's Foundation. I'd like to go live at that house. Mm. Now, I pulled this thing up. It's like, you know, because we always think of human trafficking uh, with adults. OK, a- adults. Mm. I mean, I-, I mean, I don't really th- I never I mean, I think it happens in children. But I'm thinking who would want to kids? It's more of the human trafficking. And it's like um, it says here, like pro- like normally it's like prostitution, stripping porno. But down here it says human trafficking also includes forced labor. And then common examples are selling illegal drugs, door to door sales kind of like the Jehovah's, um, restaurant work, nail and nail salons, farm work, or pairs, nannies, domestic work. So it really is forcing, if I'm correct to say, anything that forces a ch- someone underage to do something that they don't have a decision to make. So it could be long hours, 10 cents an hour, just abuse of a child. Right. I'm sorry. Um, how is the virus affecting this? I mean, with people being kind of shut down, is it helping in some way to slow it down, or is it making it worse in that they're being forced to be, you know, put in, in danger even more so? You know, that's actually a great question because we uh, the tracks in San Francisco, for example, where the youth hang out, and they are n- uh, not down there, and. So a lot of it must be going on. We, we've heard that more. it's more domestic violence, right? That's mm-hmm. definitely increased without a doubt. And that's, that's yeah. absolutely, more, uh, absolutely just as horrific. But the youth are actually, most of them are staying indoors. And because you do not see anybody out and about really in San Francisco, the Bay Area, and Oakland. But uh, it's going on behind. So it's not being visible to any of us who work directly with these kids. So wow. that can be make it even harder, you know, wow. even harder because it's behind closed doors right. now. Right. So Kelly, what have you done in the organization? Because I know you say you go, you you go, you go to Washington. I think w- with the last time you were supposed to be, I think on the show, you actually went to Washington. Yeah. yeah. So what exactly like do you do? Is it just you? Is it like a task force? Is it twenty people? I mean, sort of what does? How do you get laws changed and made and, and awareness happen on that level? Well, for me, I'm more into the uh, getting the awareness out. So, for example, if I, I go for di- when different times that I go there, it's all different each time, right? And so sometimes when I go there, I'm being asked to speak about just to give an overall, right? About because, like, for you guys, I'm giving an awareness. I'm not really, I train, but not, I refer people to another trainer who's a phenomenal speaker. So, basically, I'm one who goes into a lot of companies and is the initial speaker just to introduce people kind of sugarcoat, not sugarcoat, but give the wide variety of what exactly goes on. But me, when I, my number one thing I always like to do is to make sure that whenever I am speaking, that a survivor, at least one or two come with me mm-hmm. because they're going to give, like those girls, you heard them speaking. It's like, you know, nobody can ever say that. You know, I cannot ever, it's one thing I'm like the medium person. They're the ones who are the ones who are telling their story. I'm all about their story being told because it is their story. I have no Mm -hmm. So I just, and that's what I do. And then I also work with the uh, uh, San Francisco Unified School District as well. But it is more on coming up with ideas, you know, about, for example, really quick, like California has implemented like 
training, but also be to be heard from the word of mouth. For example, when the schools has their, uh, the captain of the football team, right? All the boys are going to be listening to him. They're not going to right. listen to me, given an overview about human trafficking. So the school, the school uh, class president will speak. And then also like the football cap, popular kids will talk about it, about how it's not cool to do this, how it's not cool if you're a guy to pimp out your girlfriend, you know, that sort of thing. Cause it's about to bring an awareness to 12 year old kids. Right. Know? Right. You know, but yeah. Taking away the cool aspect. Exactly. Uh, you yeah. know, it's not, it's not funny and it's not cool. Right. right. Hey, everybody, you're watching Between the Sheets here on United Broadcasting Network. We're on the first and third Friday of every month. We have wonderful guests, Kelly Gilliam with the Knowles Foundation and Patty Doherty from Doherty Solutions. If you want to call 323-524-2599, that's 323-524-2599. We're talking about human trafficking. And now I'm going to segue just a little over into Patty Doherty. Patty, what do you do? Tell us what you do. You've got a... <laughs> I mean, I, I looked at your little bio. It's like, what doesn't she do? <laughs> Jersey girl, just like me. So, well, you know, I mean, pe past career, right? I've been an executive recruiter for, you know, far, far too long. So in short, I'm a connector, right? You know, connecting from, from business to business, business to people, people to business. But, you know, what I'm all about now is connecting right here, right? It's, it's an inside job. So that's where the life coaching comes in, which is more, you know, career transition, conflict resolution, I mean, active listening, but it's still that connective piece, which is why I just decided to go with the spiritual headhunter, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm not out hunting, hunting heads at night, but here it is when you want it, when you want to go deep, you have to start talking to the subconscious because that rules everything. Well, Cheryl, I'm sure you know that as a fact. You know, it's like <laughs> reaching people, Patty, on a deeper level, right? Yeah, you know? exactly. And and that's quite honestly, you know, tran you, you, you have to be able to find the way to transform your story and say thank you for everything. Because something something that you can't say thank you to is baggage. And who wants to be carrying that around? And so, like, I I know that we have our stories but it's just like important to be mindful to not stay attached to them, especially if they're going to keep us anchored into that victim mentality. It's hard, you know, but, but that's life. That's the human experience. I think it's being able to just, you know, continue to grow. And here it is, as we all know on this call, right? It's all about love. Mm -hmm. It's all about love and like living a like large life. <laughs> Like, you know, be big, be big, be as big as you fucking can. And, and I don't mean that in like a forceful way. I'm saying like, feel the vibe, right? Like feel it in your core and, and put language to it. And if you can't put language to it, put a rhythm to it, like get connected with something that really makes you feel, mm, you know, alive. Good. So. So it sounds like you're a connector. You're helping people connect to their authenticity, you know, of yeah. who they are, their, their originality, you know? Yeah. Because, you know, we're, we're yeah. all creators yeah. and, and, it, you know, especially now with what's happening with the virus, I think people are really realizing, you know what? I never liked that job. I didn't want to go in there. I'm so happy to not be around my boss. It's nice to have a break and you're being able to like, have that downtime to, you know, start to create for yourself. And there's, you know, I call it the inner work, even though I'm looking for different language for that, but it is about, you know, going within and it's not like meditating all day long because there's exercises that can help you do that. Meditating's overrated anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Although I'm actually doing it more, but it's only because I have that muse machine. Otherwise I couldn't get focused. Okay. But I think about this time and anyway, and it's like, even though people go human trafficking and Patty, what Taddy Doherty does. I mean, it really is about transformation. It, it is. is about just, it's about like bottom line love. It's about going inward. I mean, you know, I, I mean, I'm very fortunate. Um, I have not had like major trauma or anything. And, and that word is tossed around. But I think 
throughout this time, and I think throughout this life, and I think at this very moment, I think everyone is going through a complete transformation. Right. And it's like a, and I mean, they keep using that word reset. And I get that. But I mean, you guys, have you guys seriously been going inward at all? I mean, when I started this, I created everything. I'm like, okay, between the sheets now is Zooming. And then I'm going to go on Facebook Live every night at 7.30 and do a chat. Oh, God, I've got to do the Between the Sheets happy hour every Thursday. Oh, I've got to go to Andrea Meyerson's event. Oh, God, this was And it was like, oh, my God. It, but it was so much fun because it's never been like this before. It's like, the oh, if I had time, I would do all of this. Now I've got the time, and now I'm completely burnt out. So I'm like, fuck. Cara, go ahead. Well, I was only going to say that you said that everyone's going through transformation. And I actually don't think that's true. I think a lot of people are so resistant to transformation. They just cannot go there. They are stuck in this mm -hmm. fear space where mm -hmm. they think that everything's over and like they're going to die. And I, and I just don't, I don't see it like that um, because I don't choose to. And I, I, I do see it as a, as a transformational time. And I think we will all be better off when we've, I'm, I don't know, find our own tribes or... Yeah. I don't know what it is that we're going to have to do because what's going on right now is not going to serve us as a whole because we're not looked at as a whole. We're just, we're just the people who are doing what we're told. That's never suited me. I'm sorry. I just... <laughs> um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to back you on that 100%, right? And that's where it's like if the... If the way you were taught, if what you're doing right now isn't working for you anymore, guess what? You're the only one that's responsible for you to, to fucking change it, right? I mean, it, it is, you have to have courage you do. To, to enter into a, a zone of transformation or, or simply let's just make it a little bit lighter and that's change, Yeah. right? Like it's going into the uncertain aspects and everyone is waking up and realizing right now, guess what? Life isn't always so fucking certain. Yeah. You know what, Patty, though? Mm -hmm. Like that's us. Cause we're sort of enlightened beings. You know what I mean? We're, we, we don't <laughs> fucking know. I mean, seriously, like we get this shit. Okay. But a lot of fucking people, I mean, they live in fear. They are guided by fear. So if you're guided by fear, change like set you off like in a panic. I mean, most of us, look at us. Most of us have done, like we looked at what we had right now and instead of being fearful, we've reinvented ourselves, recreated yeah. ourselves. So it's like, okay, I mean, the train is stopping, but we're going to keep moving and we'll find whatever suits us that helps us to get out and, and, and do what we need to do. But there are a lot of people that are like, and I'm not saying not to lock yourself up in your house if you feel you need to, but that is not me. Um, it's, I create things, but I am now stuck in my house, which it's a beautiful house, but it's, I'm stuck. But should you stay stuck and not change in fear? Or do you look at what you have around and adapt and create? And that's the important stuff. And I think that's what's happening with it, with Cara, what you're saying with people is some of them just are just paralyzed, but it's about fear. So how do you get about people? Go ahead, Jen, Jenny. You know, there, there was, I think it was a meme I saw somewhere. It was like, you're not stuck in your house. You're safe in your house. And I think as simple mm -hmm. as the way we word things, exactly. when you talk, you're taking that in too. You're hearing it when you say it. And I think that, you know, uh, we, we have to start, it's just, everything is different. We, and we needed to look at everything differently. There's a, a thing, yeah. on Facebook, I think it's called Tom Foolery. It's this, this guy made like a, a, a fairy tale that he's reading to his kid and yeah. it, so good and just talks about how you know it's supposed to be like in the future looking back at 2020 oh yeah uh, and it's it's mm. really awesome I, I didn't know we we're gonna come up with it but i'll try to find the link and send it to you guys it's just such a yeah. great way to look at it like where we were we were all going so fast and polluting so much and so much plastic and we were doing all this and we needed to just you know slow down for a minute and you know but were we doing it i don't think it was us that was doing it our governments were doing it. Our mm -hmm. governments were caring about the things and weren't looking after the earth. It wasn't us. Mm -hmm. So I, I agree with you that we're not stuck in our homes, but this isn't my choice. And, I, and I'm not scared mm -hmm. by a virus. So 
I don't know. I'm glad that things are going to change. You should be scared by this one. This, this is a scary virus. You need to be scared by this virus to a point. You need to be careful. With I don't know. It. So the fact that you're safe in your home, everybody's bitching and yeah, it's horrible. But I mean, you know, in 1918, what did they do? You know, I did a bunch of military shows and uh, the, Back then, it was like 2005, 2007. So they. Oh, I thought you were going to say in 1918. I'm looking yeah, at it's fucking amazing. That's my world. I know, I know, I'm a million. No, 2007, 2005, whatever. Uh, dates are hard, you guys. It's hard. <laughs> but uh, no, but these guys were able to call home, right? And even they told them, don't ever call home on the sa- at the same time every day because the internet was sketchy. So, like, if every day they got a call from their loved one in a at five o'clock and all of a sudden they didn't get a call at five. Oh shit, what happened? So, but they still were able to connect. And I remember thinking at the time my, when my dad was in World War II, he, you know, he wrote a letter and sent it and maybe six months later he got an answer. And in that same way, we have to quit looking at, oh my God, this is so hard and go, okay, Netflix, I've got this, I've got that, I've got whatever. And I think, you know, we are safe in our homes and it's, it's, we're stuck yeah it's a pain in the ass yeah we can't do whatever i'm missing sports like nobody's business oh yeah right so in the long run yawn um go ahead. <laughs> we, gotta we gotta reshift you know we, but, we like no one's business but yeah. the thing is it's sort of like 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 orange county okay it's open for business like nothing's going on ventura mm-hmm. county i just read the other day ventura beaches are open and now the mayor or someone saying masks are optional now oh, my god mm-hmm. I don't understand is like, okay, even though, and I I love Ventura County, if Ventura, if you're telling people the beaches are open, right? Masks are like optional. I mean, I would rather he say like bathing suit tops are optional. I'd rather go with that. Um, Like, you know, wear what you want on top. But I mean, the point is now, if that's the only beach that's open or one of the only beaches, you think, because there's no martial law, people are going to cross county lines that of may course. or may not be infected, no. go to fucking Orange County, go to fucking sure. Ventura County, and spread it. I would like to see in a few weeks right, what those numbers in those counties, what those numbers will be. Interesting. I, Me too. I yeah, mean, Wisconsin. Wisconsin had the and two weeks after the election, there was a spike because people are all out there germing all up the same machines. Hmm. Now, if anyone to- wants to pick me up in a cab and take me to Ventura, I'm game. I'll do anything. Take me. I actually am going next week, possibly, um, to go see something. But um, but it's just, uh, but the thing is, but then again, we always have Clorox and Lysol. So it, it's, it's just, <laughs> oh, God. Now, now what's really interesting is this is uh, that dumb fuck. Uh, oh, by the way, I got my first Facebook warning. Um, you did. Yes, because I call Mitch McConnell a drunk, a dick, and white trash. <laughs> wow. So, um, nice. Oh, I, I got my first Facebook warning. Hey, okay, and he's mm. all white trash. Oh, <laughs> what are you thinking? So now when I open my Facebook, it's this thing, a scroll across the bottom, and it'll be on for a year. I am warned for a year. Ooh. Oh. They're going to shut here. you down. Baby. And it says, they, you're the only person that sees this. Really? Mm-hmm. Why? I mean, seriously. But like, wow. you got fucking Trump, okay? With that asshole. And he's telling people about Lysol, Clorox, Mistoline, mm-hmm. Pine Sol, whatever the fuck he's finding, whatever. I mean, now, did you ever think, because I know you all thought this, the people who voted him in, right? They would be the assholes to try that shit. Right. Mm-hmm. Hey, the C- the CDC and, you know, everyone got a lot of calls. Mm-hmm. White poison control got so many calls over that. Oh, no. Can we, can we really do that? Is this really a way? I mean, really, it was unnerving. Oh, no. to hear I'm that. Yes, oh. like a hat wearing person. Yes, yes, you can drink bleach. <laughs> I mean, seriously, I mean, if, like, if you want to eradicate the Republicans, please go on the air every week. <laughs> <laughs> I'm... I'm I'll I, invest in Clorox. I, I don't really, mind. I, I mean, to, you know, no. and this way, like that, we can deal with the coronavirus because that's extinguished some people, and then we'll extinguish the rest, and then it'll be a blue world. I hope. 
Mara, did you want to say something? I kind of did. <laughs> I, I think that he was, you know, the president was missing out loud, you know, in which he needs to control how when he just kind of talks without thinking and he's kind of this idea sounds interesting or or that. But it was it was funny to me, but it's also really embarrassing. But I have to say that anyone that is stupid enough to think that that's what he was saying. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm sorry. That's, that's, that's really, that's ignorance. You know, I mean, he's thinking out loud. Um, and you well, thought that the people that voted him in were intellectual. That's his, those are the people who voted him in. Why are you, where are you getting data that the, the ignorant people that try it are the ones that voted him? Aren't there enough people that, that didn't vote for him that are also ignorant? I go with it. Blue people are fine. We're we're gonna kill. We're gonna like kill the reds tonight. <laughs> no, people are ignorant too. But it's true. You're absolutely right. I mean, it, it like there are people that are. I don't know if it's ignorant. I mean, maybe they are, but there are people that aren't as educated as as most of us here. And, and we can't sit there and go, oh, stupid people do stupid things. Um, they're they don't maybe they don't have the sources or whatever. And if you've got the president which, you know, he's not my president, but if he's saying even something like this, he's an asshole. I mean, even if he, he said it is a humorous thing or whatever, he is a loose cannon. Oh you, yeah, there's you no have doubt. People, you do have people that aren't really thinking and they're so desperate for a cure or they're afraid, you know, so, because there's no fucking answers about this goddamn oh, virus. And that's it, Gayanne. It's, um, you know, it's the psychology of human behavior. You know, right. people can play, people can go for so long, right? And then right. they start getting desperate. They start, you know, wanting to do things for themselves. They start, you know, protesting and getting, you know, and so it, it is, it, it's, um, it's, it, it's human behavior to kind of get restless and kind of get that warrior energy going there. Right. Yeah. No, it's just it, how unfortunate that someone that so many people would take him so literal yeah, that they would call the CDC to look information and True. not use their own God given brain yes. to figure like that just amazes me how yeah, like, let me tell you this, let me give you the inf- this information and then just take it. Like it yeah, makes no sense to me. I think they want to believe it. They want to yeah. believe. They, first of all, it's make America white again. Let's get right. what they mean. They want to believe it's going to get back to that. They want to believe that it's going to be all okay. We're going to do whatever he says because it'll be great. I just can't <laughs> believe the, the reactions while Trump is talking to his, the poor that poor doctor woman. You know, she's trying to like. She's just I know, like, right? like, like, oh my God, I know the cameras are on me right now. This guy is ludicrous. And I'm, and did you see, she's like, she's like, and then she, well, so far that hasn't been tried. Um, oh my God. I was dying. And then that reporter guy, the guy asking questions and, you know, who was present there, did you guys catch him where he's like, well, Mr. President, you know, people turn to you for guidance and, <laughs> you know, things, are you, sh- you should be talking like this. He said something like that. And yes. of course, like, I just thought it was a great, you know, just something to think about. Jerk. And then also, how about when they do, even Fauci and all these people and they do their briefings and shit. Why are they closer than six feet apart? Right. Why yeah. is no one wearing a fucking mask? Mm-hmm. I mean, conspiracy theory theorists have it that there's yeah. a fucking a vaccine or some shit, and these assholes yeah. already got have it. I mean, it's like if you're gonna do this and want us to follow this and put right. the of fucking god in us, then fucking do it yourself. Right. Exemplify. There it. is that. Well, uh, it's you know, not macho to wear a mask, gang. <laughs> <laughs> now the restlessness right now that it does seem like very unfair, and and I can see how Orange County is, um, you know, fighting Newsom on the whole beach thing, and not, you know, how dare he tell us we can't even go to the beach because it does start to seem a little barbaric when you take away those kind of freedoms. But at the same time, I feel like. You, they should chill and just abide by what Newsom's saying right now because I feel that 
that um, they are like those protesters in Huntington Beach and, you know, they're not wearing masks and their constitutional rights, this and that. I think that they are really making asses of themselves, in my opinion. I love them. <laughs> they're, they're oh, not. I love them. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, it's just like, like, let's not be sheep. Let's be real people with brains. Yeah. It, it, you, you know, know it's, it's. We still it's, behave, but we don't have to be told. Yeah, it's that restlessness, you know, and then you get to be irrational and then the thoughts get irrational. And yeah, we always have to remind each other to be get grounded. Hey, look, be get centered, get grounded, yeah. you know, come back down to earth because there's so much mental energy. You know, everyone's trying to think their way out of this or reason their way out of us. And sometimes we don't have all the answers yet. So, you know, everyone's doing the best they can do. Uh, what I'm excited about seeing in the future, really, are all the inventions, the new technologies that come from this, the, yeah. the ways that we yeah. do connect on a personal level. I mean, I really do think that we're going to look maybe, um, you know, into each other's heart a little bit deeper, you know, when we connect, you know, we're not going to take things so lightly anymore. You know, it is really important and uh, it, it's kind of bringing us full circle. Right. Well, I have to tell you at this time, you can actually tell the kind people and the born assholes. Um, <laughs> I, I mean, you're like, like, hi, I'm kind, and you, you're an asshole. Because at, at this time, I mean, this time, seriously, I mean, this is a time for like compassion, unity, um, you know, really love, peace, mm -hmm. empathy, being kind, putting shit aside, yeah. you know, like, like bonding instead of going, you yeah. know, you're a fucking jerk and I hate you and I don't you know and, right. and this should and then the ones that do that obviously I don't want them around me I don't want you know, but it's it seriously is it real this has now become like the 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 people who are aware and the people who are not and the people mm -hmm. who are not should drink bleach but I mean it's <laughs> but I mean it is it's just really mm -hmm. sad that with uh, within this this what's going on and we really should be banding together and going inward like you know like you all are saying like Kelly you do it one way Patty you do it one way Cheryl I mean we all are but you do have a certain bunch of people that just don't think on their own so they more like are lemmings they follow a flock mm -hmm. and those are the ones that I feel really sorry for mm -hmm. I mean I don't know it's my opinion well, and also, yeah, no, I get it. Go ahead, Kelly. No, go, Kelly. You know, like even what you were mentioning, you know, Gayanne, about like creativity and that sort of thing. It's like all these restaurants now are going to have to be very creative. People like us who put on events, chef, yeah. is really going to have to be, like you said, it's like we got to move forward because it will not be the same for quite a while, right? Realistically, we know that. And so it's like we're going to have to figure out and team up with as many people as possible hey, okay, we got to make this work. Like Dinah Shore, you know, Dinah Shore, you know, Mariah Hansen's over there trying to figure yep. out all the full details because she will make it happen and it will be fun, but it will be different. You know, everyone, and I talked to um, Madonna Cacciatore the other uh -huh. night, who's at LA Pride. Oh man, she's phenomenal. But they're in there working their asses off right now trying to figure out all the things that we can do to accommodate smaller groups of people or whatever, to still make it fun. And it's like, Hey, you know, not to look like, um, I'm sorry, the woman, uh, Patty, I believe was saying about how, you know, people, you have to like move forward in the past is the past type of thing. That past is the past. And that was like before. And then now it's like, okay. And supporting like the local restaurant. Now me, I think I gained 40 fucking pounds because <laughs> <laughs> local restaurants, in Chinatown, you know, or out in the Italian district or my neighborhood here in Noe Valley in San Francisco. It's like support the local mom and pop places. Uh, that is a good idea. That's I a great that's idea. That's that's so true. That's what we're doing right now, which yeah. it is. We're doing yeah. yoga classes and salsa classes online. I certainly am. Uh, friends of <laughs> friends have passed me around to different classes. and I've really enjoyed that. I have that's really enjoyed that. I've enjoyed no. the, the cooking. I've enjoyed the smallness of my life. There's many things about it that, that I've really enjoyed, but I don't like to be told what to do. And I don't like my face covered. I just resent it. Um, the best part that's come from all of this, though, is the animal shelters. Like, that's yes. just been so wonderful mm -hmm. seeing that. Those little animals yeah. all being sheltered. I can't even, it's like a dream come true. It when is I a dream, that. isn't it? It's a dream. Yeah, it's come almost true. worth it, you know. Oh, oh, hold on. I forgot. I have questions. Maybe. Keep going. Hold on. 
I thought I had some. I'm like, shit, I thought I had something printed out. I, I was just saying that uh, Kelly, uh, great events. I don't know how you to be able to uh, do that. You've got to be rethinking all your, your promotional stuff that you do when you put on great events and everything. But I'm just really glad that I ever asked you, what do you do for a living at one of these things? <laughs> I did. I did the corporate world, right? And so I went to Cal Poly San Luis Obispo, and then I did the corporate world. I've always been a workaholic. And then I was working at a, uh, I like to help startups, right? Startups, especially mm. Bay Area, there's a lot of startups. So friends would hire me on as a consultant to help them start out. And then, like I said, then I started, you know, met Tina. I mean, it's like, shit, if you saw Tina in person, you'd be like, oh my God, you could see why I dropped everything. And I was like, okay, Aww. I want to help kids. And she just wanted to help kids. You know, she was had a great, you know, living. She was made, working for the government, had a great job, but it was about helping kids, right? So we make sure that, I mean, we don't get, a lot of CEOs, a lot of people make a lot of money in this business. Me, I'll be totally honest with you. So at the most, I probably make, well, I won't tell you at the most, I make maybe $1,200, right? But remember, I had my life before where I worked my ass off in the corporate world. And now I just do all this stuff because it's, I care about doing it. I love it. And somehow it just works out. You know, I make sure that that staff, the staff is all, you know, we didn't have to lay anybody off. And we're making sure that they're being taken care of because you always have to make sure your staff is entertained. Right. Right. Absolutely. You want your employees, especially the good ones. It's like, you don't want them to leave. So we always, but so everyone, you know, we've all been tested. We get tested quite a bit. And uh, so for, uh, for the virus, we're all fine. Um, so, but that's what I do. So basically that's what I do for a living is that and then when i put on like mecca events or and i also you know it's interesting i mean really i don't know what i really really do because i do <laughs> so many, you know like sometimes i'm like wait what am i really doing but i'm busy all the time i'll tell you yes. that <laughs> oh, she is one of the hardest people to get a hold of to get a call <laughs> back anything but, I mean, I'm all about promoting like even you, you know you jenny and i jenny i know we got to get you up here and i was thinking you know that was a great idea to have you up on the show on on uh on mecca on you know our page there's like two thousand women right and then to make sure the venmo money goes for you doing your stand-up comedy for whatever half an hour an hour to do that until anything opens up you know because my whole thing is i'm not getting paid for mecca i do not make money for mecca i do it for fun mm -hmm. it's, and they are really really fun <laughs> i just do it for the balance of my life but it's to promote other women's businesses right because so many mm -hmm. women have their own businesses Whatever it is, I like to connect, like you guys were saying, connecting. And I do it because it just feels good. Plus, you meet some fucking powerful women. Yeah, absolutely. Like, oh, right there, you guys are all, I'm like, in you. That one, yes. And then the Wonder one, Woman. Yeah, right? You guys are. <laughs> it is, it's about connecting good people for people <laughs> like you guys. You know, and that's what I think is important. But also, so many people need us to support, right? They need us to help push them along, or whatever it may be. And we don't do it for the recognition. I've been doing this for a long time and you're probably the first one I, who's ever asked me, Kelly, what do you really do? Because I don't, you know, the whole thing is I'm helping out these other people and it's not to get recognition. It's for to work behind the scenes. That's what yeah. I'm doing. Mm -hmm. So I, most people they are like, I've never heard of Nalls Foundation, you know, well, we got nonprofit of the year award and like, but I've never heard of it. I'm like, that's good because I prefer to work behind the scenes and do those sort of things, you know, but yeah, anything, you know, because like you all said, we have a good life. You know, for me, there's not really so far, thank God, nobody I've known has anything has happened to them. Yeah. They have positive or anything. But I have, we have a lot of women in our community at UCSF who are doctors and nurses, fucking badass LGBT women, kick-ass women, but they're posting, hey, ladies, <clears throat> make sure you keep that mask on. Ladies, you make sure to do this. And we're like, okay, okay, perfect. We just follow up because I figure... They know exactly what they're doing, you know, especially at UCSF in San Francisco. I think there's only, only, it's horrible, but 21 deaths because UCSF is able to harness it and they have great research center, right? But anyways, but that's what I do for living. Sorry, long answer. <laughs> so, <laughs> Patty, so Patty, I mean, you do the recruiting thing too. I mean, how is this, this, this right, what's going on right now affecting what you've been doing? Oh, who, who's hiring right now? That's yeah. what I mean. That's what I mean. Like, no, it's, it's, it's all coaching from here on out. I'm sure. Like, like, you know, will there be a lot of innovation? Yes. Will people be getting hired? Absolutely. Of course. 
Is it going to be in the masses? Not, not even close, not even close. So, I mean, I've been a hiring consultant. This is my, I, I would not necessarily call this a recession. I think it's more like a capital D, but, um, you know, this is my third time going around with a recession. Mm -hmm. And I pretty much, as soon as this hit, it was like, change a plan, <laughs> change course, reroute, mm -hmm. right? Reroute, reinvent. And, right. and a lot of people need certainty in uncertainty, especially when yeah. you've lived with it for so long. I feel like change is my middle name, you know? So, <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, for me, I've been at, you know, I don't do a lot of change. I mean, I, I do a little bit of change. I reinvent, but you know, I, there's always one basis at that CBS. I've been there 31 long, years. I was going to say, how long have you been in your job, baby? 31 years <laughs> at CBS, 31 years. That is my constant, um, you know, the executive at CBS for 31 years. That's why, but I have that grounding so I can create and stuff because I've got that. So I mean, yeah. even for this podcast, I don't have advertisers. I don't get paid. I actually pay to have this podcast done. So sure. it's, it's fun. It's because this is my passion. Everything I do is freaking passion. Mm -hmm. um, but okay. So a friend of mine, okay. She sent me this and she said, why don't you ask the question to your audience or on your knees feed into your ladies? Ready? Ready. Mm -hmm. How uh -huh. are people changing emotionally, mentally, spiritually, and physically because of what's going on right now? Speak up. <laughs> Mara. Oh, physically, I mean, I put on like 15 pounds probably. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that it's different for every person. I think that there's a collective, we're all in this together thing that is nice to see. Even when you drive out and you see, oh, he's wearing a mask, they're wearing masks. It's kind. It's it's, it's like oh look, they're wearing matching masks. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a unifying thing. Oh um, my god! I would love to know what Patty thinks about that because you're all in the spiritual leader here. So <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say that. But, but yeah. this, this is this is one mm -hmm. thing that's going to resonate true, right? N number one universal law is we are one. Yeah. If there's any commanding universal law, that's it. So as a collective, we are knowing as a, a, as a planet, everyone on the globe, we know now that we are absolutely in this together and we are one. So from, you know, an energetic standpoint, I, you know, quite honestly, I find that fascinating. I mean, this is kind of like an interesting experiment if it was just an experiment, but it's real. I mean, right. you know, emotionally, like emotionally, like I'll have for me times like this week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I just cried. I don't know what the fuck I was crying about. Yeah. I just cried. But for me, I was actually delving deep and whether I knew what to point it on. Apparently I was purging something. And I needed to purge something. So I just sort of went with it, which tied into the, and then mentally, spiritually, you know, physically, I lost 11 pounds. But I mean, like, wow. and I, I know that's amazing. That's amazing. Everyone's, that's on on. Everyone's so, weight on. I just want, I lost. But the thing wow. is, it's really weird as I do those Facebook <laughs> live chats, right? I'm weird. I'm like, everyone does this. Gayan ends up doing that always. Oh, I mean, I looked at the Facebook live chats. I started it on March 22nd and I've been going on every single night at 7.30 p.m. I look and I downloaded them because I said, I'll just put them up on YouTube, right? Mm -hmm. I looked at the March 22nd one till mm -hmm. the one I did two days ago. Mm -hmm. I'm a, I look like a completely different person. Never. Yes. Oh. Besides the fact that I lost weight, I have been doing obviously some, in, I know I've been doing some inner work and spiritual work because even like the way I look, my like it's like the energy and it's, I just feel lighter. I look younger. Mm -hmm. I feel freer. It's just really weird. And that has nothing to do with makeup or anything like that. It's just a glow. And I know that's weird, but I felt a shift in me. And if I didn't have this time, I don't know if I would have shifted. And I know I better shift right. because I'm 50 fucking six. You know what I mean? People are like, you're going to like make up for lost motherfucking time, kid. You know what I mean? But, but I think with all of us, I think we are all shifting 
whether it's a conscious decision to shift or it's not a conscious decision to shift. And, but I think most people will get to wherever we need to get to after this. But again, we all do it in different ways because we're all right. separate, different people. But to know as a collective that we're right. all doing it together mm -hmm. is pretty amazing. Yeah, it is. And Gayanne, really interesting. When you do shift like that, when there's a transformation, you'll see it on the face. Wow. Yeah, I know. I see it. I see it now. Although I did cut my bangs too short. But other than that, <laughs> I'm okay. Um, all right. There was a second part. Second part to this. She, she's, a, she's a researcher. Does it feel this whole time now? Does it feel novel for now? Does it feel novel for now? Hmm. Sure. May I just say that... Oh, um, I'll just jump in quickly if Cheryl's got something to say. I've just to say that it's not that novel for me because I've been through a big, you know, personal change where I, I, we, I got a divorce out of the blue mm -hmm. uh, and I had to go through the, a, a time of just going into myself. So this is almost like an icing on the cake for me because this is like mm -hmm. enforced into yourself mm -hmm. and, and I, I've had the practice. So I'm kind of, I was already three quarters of the way there and now I'm just instead of dancing in the, you know, for 24 hour fitness, I'm dancing with my mates on the YouTube. It's, for me, it's very different. What about you, Cheryl? I, I Well, for me, I'd have to say what's really changed for me, because I have had change in my life, but it's been good change. Always somehow, right? It somehow works out to be good change, right? Mm -hmm. uh, one time, uh, you know, I got let go from a job, but uh, my I knew my angel's threw me in a lifeboat. You know, that's what happened is they, I was being saved actually. Right. And you don't realize it till after the fact. So there's like a gay and you're shifting and transformations happening. Now there's going to be a lot of transformation that we're going to see maybe in stages with other people, you know, after the fact. Uh, but for me, it's brought me closer with my family. It's just mm -hmm. really, it has, it's brought me closer mm -hmm. with people just in general, whether it's a phone call, but really with my family, I have to say, that's a big transformation for me right now. Yeah. Loving it. It's all good. So, so can I ask you though, can you, was I thrown in a lifeboat? Were you, I'm sure you were. I'm sure, I'm sure you were the angel actually probably <laughs> saving yourself, you know, a car because you, there are angels that walk on earth. So I'm sure you're one of them, but yeah, you were definitely <laughs> saved over and over. <laughs> There's a little blue hue around you, so I'm sure there are angels around Aww. you. <laughs> uh -huh. All right. All right. Here's another one. How do you guys think this will look a year from now? Ooh. I think uh, it will Mara, go ahead, Mara. How do you think it'll look a year from now? I think and I'm hoping that it'll be back to our old normal, but um and Maybe. epic fail. That was an epic fail. It, I, I yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm going to uh, back you on that one, Gay Ann. Yeah. Why? It can't get back to normal. It can't. The normal was the norm. I think, first of all, my, as you guys talk, I've been talking all along. Explain why it can't. Explain tomorrow why it can't get back to the new, nor the old normal. There, There is no normal now. Yeah. yeah. We're, we're going good. to be in transition to what is going to be quote unquote, a new normal. And that's not going to happen overnight. Everyone's going to be feeling displaced and, and unsafe and uncertain about their friends because they don't wear a mask. Oh, guess what? They're not wearing a mask. They're no longer my friends. Like this is a huge fucking shakedown, right? I mean, on so many levels, like if you look at all the levels of your life, do you and, see it ever going back to the way it was before ever? No, I so don't. So you mean like like the way we used to go out and just touch things and whatever? Okay. Like even if they come out with a vaccine for this, you're still saying that you would never see it going to that unawareness state we were in before. That That's right. That's mm -hmm. where I'm coming from. Yeah, that we're, that we're I, I don't. We'll we'll be in we'll be living in this unsafety land for quite a while, and just really not knowing our place in it all, and and how to go about operating in our lives. This is, I'm I'm certain. Like here, when when the lockdown is lifted now in Washington, it's going to be May 31st. 
there's going to be some grand party somewhere, I'm sure of it. But, it, you know, in the end, everyone is going to be with a question mark raised in the middle of their forehead wondering what the fuck, right? How do they go about operating in their daily lives and what's okay? Can I touch you? Can I not touch you? Do you want a hug, a butt rub? Oh, you know, I mean... It's just this, like, it's like where I saw, I saw a buddy of mine the other day and I was like, mm, Kenya, I want to. And then we just like gave each other a butt shakedown and, <laughs> it was just like, <laughs> you know, but like, I, I don't, you know, it's all in that of, are you safe or, or are you not? Are you living in fear? Or are you going to choose love? Do you feel supported? Oh, wait a minute. There's challenge. We live in a world of duality. You can't, have one, you can't have one without the other. That's very true. And one thing that I have found throughout this whole thing is I was really, I have a tendency to kind of like bask in or just dwell in negative, negative thoughts. <laughs> And um, everything was uh, like getting back on track before the quarantine for me. And now that the quarantine happened, I found myself sinking back into those negative uh, thought patterns. And it's just teaching me that I need to put the effort into really listening to the things that cheer me up, like Abraham Hicks and, you know, uh, just I don't know. It's just challenging. It really is. And it's also kind of depressing when you think about if this is how it's going to be for over a year, the future for dating aspects is really scary. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, yeah. Well, try, try, to, try to like, Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, no, no. no. Uh, go ahead, Kelly. I would. I, I, oh, go ahead. What, <laughs> some, oh, wait, I can't see anyone. All right. Oh, Kelly, I, Kelly first. Okay. But just, you know, for example, like Mara, it's all about just, uh, you know, it is, it's going to be, we're going to have to adapt in a way. It's going to be, we're going to have to learn that it's, it's not going to be the same, but you can look at it in a positive way or a negative way, or just a realistic approach, right? Mm -hmm. For some of those events, I'm sure when we go into concerts, they're going to be taking our temperature, you know, before, oh. you, you know, things like that. And we'll do, I know, right? And it's so just, true. <laughs> Where we just are going to have to be like, fuck, we're I thankful to be fucking alive, right? Because the thing is, like, like you know, right now, it's just really tough because I know we're fine. We're all fine here. But thousands and thousands of people have died. Thousands of people have died. And that, you got people in New York, Italy, all over. And it's just like, oh, my God, this should not have been. But it did happen. So it's like, oh my God, but we have to make sure that we can do whatever we can to bring humor into whatever we're doing, because it's like either that way or end up, you know, with the virus. And I, you know, and I do not want that virus. So if it means, hey, fuck, I got to wear a fucking mask. All right. So I got to wear a fucking mask. Do I have to stay six feet away from a friend? No problem. But I go visit my friends. I'll still do it if they live in my neighborhood or even when I'm in LA. It's just, we stay six feet apart. We'll just like, you know, and make we did it. I mean, Kelly, we just did it last, well, a few of us yeah. did it last weekend at Cara's house. Yeah. I, by the way, um, oh, <laughs> at Cara's house. Oh, yeah. um, Patty, what were you going to say, darling? Oh, I was just going to say when that negativity hits, like dance. Definitely. Yeah, that, Definitely. That's, that's, one of, that's one of the easy go-tos, right? Yeah. Like throw on yeah. a headset and, and freaking dance your little ass off and raise the vibe because you know i i used to i i studied aviation and mm. i would you know completely do nose dives and a good friend of mine when when i take a dip he'll always be like <laughs> you know throttle up throttle up <laughs> like well, <laughs> don't don't go into the deep well like there's no black abyss just like pull it up because you know there's there's got to be comedy somewhere Oh no, well, never. I want a t shirt that says throttle up. I love that. I love that. <laughs> right now, a t shirt, throttle up. Throttle up. Throttle up. <laughs> Cheryl, what did you, did you have something else to impart on us in this part? Oh, I just God. wanted to say, Mara, you know, if whenever you get to those points, I love the dancing. I love it. Absolutely. And know that you've got to, you know, if you can, pick up the phone call a friend, you know, that's what we're, that's what we're here for. You know that, but yes. really it is about, it is about look, having each other. And that's, what's going to come out of this is look, we can talk to each other. We can go through this together, you know? Well, also, Cheryl, I do feel that 
the more I look toward the unknown of how long is this going to go on for, um, the more depressed I get because, so I try to bring myself into this moment as much as I can. Mm. But that's the thing, Mara, I agree with you because I think a lot of people right now, and this is about for me focusing, you know, I have, I've always thought I was always in the present bullshit. Mm -hmm. I was either like back or forward. I am really consciously yeah. now making and uh, being aware to make sure I, when I fall myself slipping that I put myself in the present. And if it's yeah. putting on that muse to shit and doing some meditation about boundaries, cause I'm fine. Oh, I, I found what boundaries are and I'm learning them. And I actually exerted them on someone the other day. They didn't like it, but I felt empowered cause I now fucking have boundaries. Nice. Um, okay. yeah. but I'm, Thank you. But, um, <laughs> but the thing is, it's, it is about focusing because Mara, you and I are alike in a lot of ways, besides the fact that we're wearing the same thing. You and I are so obsessed with playing with our hair on air. If it's not, <laughs> you and I are doing the same shit, we're moving our hair. And I'm like, this is me. This is like my mirror image of me. How, how many, how many fucking like th ways can I put my hair on the air to make some, <laughs> I mean, like, I'm so done with that shit. Um, and I'm looking, looking at you, Mara. <laughs> so oh, she does a no. shift and I do a shift. Um, I know, sorry. <laughs> I should have my hands like be sitting on my hands during the No, I'm only kidding. It's <laughs> funny. I mean, it's just funny. But I mean, I think it is really, it's hard to be present. I mean, it's easy to say, but mm -hmm. it really is hard to be present. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you know, Mara house party me, you know, always house party me. Um, we all have each other mm -hmm. here. You know, it well, doesn't it matter. Expect. It's so depressing. Like imagine how it's going to be going forward with dating and first dates and <laughs> first times. And well, you know what I mean? Like first lays or first... <laughs> I don't know. First kisses. First, how are people? How are you supposed if to? You do don't die from the first kiss. The first oh, lay is going to be fine. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's about progression. Okay, you're, you're gonna you're gonna take their temperature before you fuck them. That's what you're gonna do. Just I don't kidding. think it's gonna be that bad. I, I think. Can I do it up there, Ross? I, <laughs> I think it'll come back. The attention of this country is this. I think this will all, we'll be over and done. I think some- That's what I said next year. I yeah, think it will so. eventually go back to normal. I, I don't I think it's already idiot. Look at the, all the people right now today protesting in Huntington Beach. Yeah. No yeah, I know. Well, and, and, and I think once it gets a little bit safer and once people, people feel a little bit safer, I, I think there will certainly be precautions, but I'm hoping yeah. the entire world scientists got their, their minds trained on this. We will have some sort of a vaccine within another year or two. So I think yeah. it's going to be tomorrow, tomorrow, but eventually things will come back. I don't, I really don't see this as a, it probably should be. We could, you should be cleaner, but the, the you know, we, we got to get our, our environmental stuff in intact too. And, and yeah. that's we need to turn our focus, but the personal interpersonal changes, I think, I think that'll be fine. So people will be feeling you up in no time. <laughs> Mara, I do not know why you're asking. You haven't been on a date in a long time. You are so picky. So I don't know what a year from now is going to do. I, like, you know, I just like to know that there is that option down the line. Like, you know, that I don't have to meet somebody with a screen in between us. And, you know. I, I mean, I do. I mean, what the fuck do I know? But I mean, look, I, I we just had a, I mean, what we're talking about where I work and it's, you know, it's been in variety and, and stuff because I think my business mm -hmm. is, is pretty impacted because you can't make a movie. You can't make a TV show with 10 people yeah. and they're trying to figure out how do you do this mm -hmm. with a certain amount of people? How is hair and makeup? How is wardrobe? So you've got all, for the first time, all, my the God. Heads, all these companies, wow brainstorming, working with the mm -hmm. CDC, working, mm -hmm. like trying to figure how do we get back on set? So, I mean, we probably mm -hmm. won't do, I, I have like, um, the ACMs, okay? That's the Country Music Awards. We were supposed to be mm -hmm. doing it two weeks ago. They've just moved it to September 16th. It was supposed to be in Vegas. Mm -hmm. We're now in Nashville. I um, mean, what makes them think they're going to be fine by September 16th or 15th? We don't, we don't. 
And but you will do it maybe without an audience and maybe it's one person on the stage at a time and maybe it's this. I mean, you know, my specialty is photography. So they're saying, is it really important to have a photographer on the set as they're filming, which it is to capture the imagery. So mm -hmm. now the photographers are looking at different techniques and stuff, maybe like a GoPro that they're from behind. Maybe wow. there's a drone that we're shooting. Maybe we put our sticks and shit up and we do it electronically. Or maybe we have the actors do the scene, then everybody leaves, the photographer comes on with the farther distance and the actors go through the scene again, just for photos. Um, and, and that's that, and that's in a lot. Now, when you go on location, you know, you're renting somebody else's house. So right. now you have to disinfect all of that. I oh, mean, yeah. right. they're talking wow. about the Airbnb and stuff too. Oh. So I think if we could get, not that, again, not that I'm a scientist or anything like that, but I think, I think once the, my opinion, and my opinion only, not the opinion of the company that I work for, um, <laughs> Jenny's laughing because I can't. Not everybody knows I work for CBS. I can't. I have to make sure that I don't have anything. But I think once we find, I think once people are tested more, and we are actually tested, I think we can get a better mm -hmm. hand as to how many people have it, how many people have had it. So I think that massive testing a needs to be done so we can get proper numbers. Apparently, okay, because right now people are getting tested are the ones that think they're sick. So are the numbers really that big? I don't know. It could be, you know, it could be like, and I'm going to like maybe out of the million people, 700,000 are sick, you know, and they go get tested, but there's some of us that aren't, you know what I mean? So I think like, I personally think everybody needs to get tested. Yeah. I think that vaccine or whatever the heck that is, that cure or whatever mm -hmm. that they have to stop fucking it up with the pharmaceuticals and the, and the, and the people and, and, fi and, and all these people trying to figure out like how, who's going to make the most money. So I, I believe that we got to like, like if this is really a pandemic and people are dying, why do we give a fuck right now? Who's going to make money? Let's mm -hmm. just get yeah. the fucking everything. So everybody could make money again, mm -hmm. you know? And I yeah. think so it, it, and that, and that is tied down with the politics and the bullshit. And I don't understand. So if this is so fucking important and it's humanitarian and it's you and it's unity, then we need to put all that other bullshit aside that has always been a problem. That's the and transformation happening. I think that's the transformation that. happening and, you yeah. know, having, having that gratitude and rising up, you know, to our higher selves and reaching that higher self. And like you and Mara were saying about being in the present moment, you know, and having that gratitude for all that, all the, all the stuff we already have, you know, my God, I mean, you guys, if you guys, if CBS accomplished it before, I know they're going to do it again. You know, it's like, it's, you're going to do it again. You know, something remarkable, miraculous will come out of this. You know, I just feel, I mean, we just did a, an episode of all rise. It's going to air this <laughs> Monday. Okay. Um, it's all done on zoom and everything like that. The actors are doing their own hair and makeup. They're picking their wow. own wardrobe. The show sent them iPods, I mean, iPads and ring lights and stuff to light themselves. And I mm. saw part of the rough, I saw some of the rough cut. It's going to be amazing. Wow. And it's going to be fun wow. to see it. So, um, so we'll see, but I mean, do I want it to be that? No, we oh. probably won't get on the lot. Maybe now, not till June mm. or July, uh, which means production mm -hmm. won't start till September, August, September. Wow. So, you know, again, I mean, that's my business, but it's just indicative of, I think, all businesses. I think we, I think probably mid next year, mid 2021, if I were to guess, I think we'll start to get a little bit back to normalcy. Mid 21. Mid 21, yeah. not, but, but I think, I think because like, hopefully there'll be a vaccine. Hopefully we will have this a little under control a little bit more and know what the fuck is going on. And, you know, and we really need to stop those fucking wet markets in China and every other fucking country. Um, you know, I am so sorry. And this is going to sound, well, might as well. Um, it's going to sound really, you know, um, prejudice and shit like that or whatever. But 
um, you know, ignorance got us into this mess. Stupidity got us into this mess um, from China and other countries. And we I don't know I, that. What? We don't really know that. I we think don't know I, anything. We have to remember we matter. don't know anything. But the point is, it coronavirus has been around. I yes. mean, this is nothing new. You know, every virus has been around. But I think you know people who are doing, and, and I, I'm a big animal cruelty advocate. Sorry. Um, but I think, you know, those countries that are third world countries, you know, mm-hmm. they need to figure their shit up and not yeah. be third world countries and clean up. So, I mean, I, you know, I've been to some <laughs> countries where, you know, people defecate in, and, and piss in the drinking water, mm-hmm. you know, and, you know, and I've been, I, I don't, you know, I don't love third world countries. Okay. But I'm not, not a fan, but, but. It's, you know, if, if we have to take some money instead of for the guns and all this other shit to help these people in these third world countries to help them have water, have irrigated water, put in things like they're not barbaric. That's where we should be spending the fucking money on. But we don't and we're never going to. But I do believe, we, well no, right I now. do believe if something happens like this, I have hope. I do have hope that, you know, fucking Bill Gates and all those people you know, should put their money where their mouth is. And Bill Gates isn't walking on water as far as I'm concerned either. So anybody else want to say something besides me? I have a question <laughs> for, I have a question for Cheryl and Patty. Yeah. Uh, there's like a, you know, a lot of the spiritual community feel like there's this, you know, they, they see humanity and the human race going through this just awful, awful, awful period where it's going to be just shit for a really long time. And then there's supposed to be like a thousand years of peace after that. I don't know if you guys are, are familiar with whatever that, that is, but do you feel like this is one of those things where, you know, it's going to take a shitload of a sound and what's going to happen is we're all going to go, all right, we're, we're ease all the restrictions. And then everyone's going to get sick again. I mean, wise, it's going to be back again in the fall, which will make it work. So we could lose a lot of people. So is, is this, time for us is this the time that we're gonna get shaken to the point where the race moves on to those thousand years of peace what do you think Patty? Yeah. well it, it's not armageddon i don't know if like that's where you're going i mean it's not no, armageddon no, no, i not think armageddon. i think just it's a, just a, just a, a it's a it's a, um, went through a thing you know it's like the the way i view it is that it's not an awful time It's a time of chaos and disorder. And when you have chaos and disorder, there's growth, right? So what I'm saying is that there's there's an awakening process and there's, you know, bumping us up on in consciousness, another level or two, right? So that's the way, that's the way I view it. And, and I've, you know, had conversations with others where, you know, that's the take. But, you know, I don't, I, I most certainly wouldn't view this as an awful time. Um, I think it's a time of disorder that's going to get us to more order, but it's going to be a different consciousness level. Mm. You chime in. Maybe more of a divine order. How's that, right? With those and, natural and, laws, those universal laws. Right. I, I sense that there's a new light or a new consciousness, you know, opening up mm-hmm. on our planet. And that there are a lot of people awakening to their own empathic abilities. So there's a lot of empaths opening up. So if you can imagine that in, in the chaos and the disorder opening up to being empathic, which is being super sensitive. I mean, that's even more, right? But that's what's happening is we're realizing, look, hey, we can pick up how other people are feeling, sensing, feeling, where the two worlds, maybe the spirit world and our physical world are, you know, maybe maybe that veil isn't so there anymore, you know, and we are connecting to realizing, you know, that we are spiritual beings having a human experience Mm -hmm. and we're opening up to our greater selves and, and realizing that the power of love is the creator and is the manifester and that our thoughts are powerful and they do mean something. And so if we, if we can all think just even right now, think about love and prayer and gratitude that will elevate this planet. And that our global planet is now becoming a community. We like we're this global neighborhood now. Uh, and I really feel like our level of um, intelligence is opening up 
you know, to a lot of people who are waking up. And, uh, and so we will think more about each other, but I really do feel we're going to learn more about ourselves as individuals being more connected to that divine soul that we are and realize that we're our own healer, you know, we're our own, um, we're our own pharmacy. Yeah. We're our own <laughs> healer. We're our own. Uh, yeah, exactly. We're, we're very intuitive people and that's waking up. People are waking up to that. Yeah. Well, thank you, every thanks everybody. Um, it is it's winding down, and, and necessity is the mother of invention. It's menopause, and this is my fan. Um, <laughs> fuck. Oh my god, it's so fucking hot now. Um, <laughs> and I think oh, it's oh, thank, you. Oh, it's, thank oh, you, thank you, thank you. Is that ring light? Um, I want to thank everybody. Um, I want to thank Kelly Gilliam, otherwise known as Max Mecca, for joining us. I want Patty Doherty. Thank you so much, um, you guys. We've been listening to Between the Sheets. We're here the first and third Friday of every month. Month. Next up is Friday, May 15th. That's the third. We will have Andrea Meyerson from Women on a Roll. And um, and she's very shy. She doesn't talk. So I think we're going to have something out of her. And I also have uh, Stephanie Dumont, who is a host of a show um, um, on Awake Television. So um, we'll, be, we'll have fun. But, uh, you know, Thank you. I mean, I just want to thank you, ladies. So, Kelly, where can people, what's the, um, the, the organization again, and where can they find the organization, the website? It's, uh, well, the one for the nonprofit is uh, Nalls Foundation, N-A-L-L-S Foundation, and then for events, Mecca. Mecca. It's going to LA, yeah, Mecca. And Patty, where can Spiritual. people find you? spiritualheadhunter.com my sweet oh, wow. niece like put me up a, a couple of pages just through the course of this week so there it is awesome thank you guys uh cheryl where can what's going on anything else uh, well you know i'm doing that mystic fair tomorrow but i'm doing so oh, many wow. things on zoom guys so just you know check out my events page it's psychic medium cheryl murphy.com and i'd love to see you uh on live facebook sometime so join me there thank you and jenny awesome. where are you gonna be um, I will be doing shows from a house. I'm going to be doing the in-house comedy show every day at one o'clock and the pandemic password at four on my Facebook page, which is my name that you can see spelled out right there. I E N I fan, Jenny McNulty fan on Facebook. And Cara Noble. Oh, I will be on the sunny side of the Taj Mahal with my <laughs> pieces and my glue. I'm, I'm going to finish that fucker if it takes me another... <laughs> Three more <laughs> months. <laughs> and Mara Shane, what's going on? Where can people find you? What are you doing? You know, I'm just trying to get by day to day and be in a positive spot, space. But I'm also on Facebook um, and Instagram as Mara, you know, Mara Shane, my name, Mara Shane. Well, it was another name last week, remember? Yeah, that's, well, that was, <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's her alias um again thank you kurt thank you kurt for doing what you do behind the scenes i appreciate you thanks kurt no problem and everyone thank thanks you. For again we're here the first and third friday of every month i'm gay Ann bruno um we'll be here again may 15th at 7 p.m pacific every night i be doing i be doing the between the sheets chats at 7 30 p.m pacific on my facebook page so tune in i promised i'd do it every single night until the pandemic is, well, not the pandemic, but the isolation's over. So I'm over a month, I'm about a month now doing it. Yeah, so that's kind wow. Of, uh, wow. And then um, every Thursday, I'll do the Between the Sheets happy hour on Zoom at 6 p.m. Pacific. So I appreciate all of you um, tuning in, watching, um, engaging, uh, supporting us. Uh, we love you guys. Um, Mara, you're playing with the hair again. Um, <laughs> <laughs> because now I have to. Um, <laughs> hey, 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 gay, happy, happy anniversary, Gay. One year. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 No, no, it's all of you guys that were yeah. part of it and all the people that have tuned in and watched and listened and 40 plus thousand strong. Thank mm. you so much. We'll see you here in two weeks. Um, I don't know what the topic is. I don't know. We're going to free form it. Um, but again, I appreciate you, Kelly. You be safe. Patty, be safe. Everyone be safe. Um, do whatever you think is best. I can't tell someone what to do. Um, but, you know, try and, and just be careful. Be careful out there. Um, you know, it's not about you sometimes. It's about the others. So just don't be selfish. Right. Love each other. Love, peace, kindness, compassion, empathy, fucking peace. And um, I love you guys. Love so... You. 
Namaste, everybody. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you so much. Hey, hey, Kurt, where's the music? Kurt, do we stay on?